Hello again. Well, I'm here. I'm going to do the the third Proverbs, Proverbs 3. And this talks about wisdom bringing blessings. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of your crops. When your barns, uh, then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke. Because the Lord disciplines those he loves, as the father, the son he delights in. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom. I'm sure I can get that last part on here. Bert. Okay. Um, blessed is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding. For she is more profitable than silver and yield better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Those who lay hold of her will be blessed. By wisdom, the Lord laid the earth's foundations. By understanding, he set the heavens in place. By his knowledge, the deep were divided, and the clouds let the drop the dew. The clouds let drop the dew. My son, preserve sound judgment and discernment. Do not let them out of your sight. They will be with they will be life for you, an ornament to grace your neck. Then you will go on your way in safety, and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be she sleep sweet. <laughs> when you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of seven, sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being snared. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back later, I'll give it to you tomorrow. When you have it now, do not plot harm against your neighbor. Uh, who lives trustfully near you. Do not accuse a man for no reason when he has done you no harm. Do not envy a violent man or choose any of his ways, for the Lord detests a perverse man but takes the upright into his confidence. The Lord's curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. He mocks proud mockers, but gives grace to the humble. The wise inherit honor, but fools he holds up to shame. So, we are promised, if we are honorable before God and faithful, we'll have God's favor and man's favor. And I know a lot of these are the things that prosperity teachers use to say, oh, 
send your money here and you'll, you know, God will bless you and yada, 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 yada. Everybody knows those things. And I'm not saying God doesn't ever bless people for giving, but God, he wants us to give out of our heart. If you see something, if you see somebody hungry and you and you're, you feel like you should buy them a, you know, a Big Mac or a drink or, you know, he honors that. Giving some money to some pastor or business or whatever that thinks, that makes you think that, oh, I gave to him now. I should get, you know, a hundred full back. I should, that's not the kind of giving God loves. And I'm sure if you talk to people who have donated to these prosperity pe people over the over their lives, you'll find out that they may be blessed in other ways. But I'm pretty sure you'll find out that they are still in need, they are still sick, they are still wanting. And, you know, I, I get it. I don't have all the answers. The answers here are the ones that I try to abide by. And... <laughs> Let me tell you, I screw up more than anything. So, just do your best. And when you mess up, you know, instead of trying to cover it up and trying to blame other people, run to God and say, Father, I tried, but I screwed it up again. He knows. I mean, it's not like we're <laughs> when we go out and sin that we're that God's up there going, oh. I didn't know they were going to sin again. <laughs> There's not much we can do to surprise God or hide it from him. So, look to him for your answers and for wisdom. Because Solomon died a long, long, long time ago. And as far as I know, there hasn't been another man with the wisdom that Solomon has. And God provided us the ability to see the wisdom that Solomon had by his writings. You have Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, if that's how I'm saying it right. <laughs> Please Please, the astasy. Uh, okay, astasy. I can't say it now. <laughs> I probably could before I thought about it, but now I'm screwed up. So anyway, teach your children God's way. Correct them when they're wrong. In love, show them the right ways. And they'll grow up and they will be a joy and a prize to you. So, anyway, that's probably more than I needed to say, but I did anyway. <laughs> so, God bless everybody. And I will try to do the, um, number four tomorrow. Take care. God bless all and bye-bye.